I'm going to be reading from Joshua 8, 30 to 35. And it reads, Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites. He built it according to what it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no iron tools had been used. On it, they would offer to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrifices, fellowship and sacrifices and fellowship <coughs> offerings. There in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on stones a copy of the law of Moses. All the Israelites with their elders, officials and judges were standing on both sides of the ark of the covenant of the Lord, facing the Levitical priest who carry it. Both the foreigners living among them and the native born were there. Half of the people stood in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had formerly commanded when he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the people of the, to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women, the children, and the foreigners who lived among them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for your guidance, your word, most of all for your grace and your mercy. I pray, my Heavenly Father, that my words will be clear and that it will touch the heart of the ones that need to listen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Today we step into the sacred pages of the book of Joshua. I love the Old Testament. And we stop to contemplate a passage that unfolds a remarkable event in the history of God's chosen people. In this passage we see Joshua having led the Israelites to the promised land orchestrates now a humble assembly. What makes this occasion extraordinary is not merely the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings placed upon the altar, but the solemnity in which they accompany these sacrifices with the reading of the law, the blessing and the curses as commanded by Moses. This act of worship transcends the physical realm it is about offering hearts, obedience, and reverence to the Almighty. The Israelites, having navigated a journey marked by losses and the divine presence of God, leading them as a pillar of clouds by day and a pillar of fire by night, stand in a pivotal moment in their faith journey. And Joshua calls them to gather as a community to offer a sacrifice of praise. And as they gather, the sacrifice of praise they offer extended beyond tangible offerings into spiritual commitments to follow God wholeheartedly. It was a recommitment of their faith in their God. In pondering how we can offer a sacrifice of praise today in our time, kind of makes it difficult sometimes for us to even come up with words that, that would just elevate how magnificent God is. We must recognize that our situation differs from the Israelites by a long way. We no longer sacrifice animals. Peter will not let us. And we won't make altars with uncut stones because we don't have them. But we could if we wanted to because this is Texas and we have trucks. 
so we could. But we can gather together and we can praise God with our voices, with our music, with our hearts, with our giving, with being present. First, in verse 834, we read, Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it was written in the book of the law. This underscores the living nature of God's word today. The scriptures still speak to us, revealing both the promises and consequences we must face when we make our choices. But we, we pause to read and meditate on God's word. We present him with a sacrifice of praise. And just for me to, as I was reading uh, this in a, in a book that is about praising God, it, it's just kind of like, it just doesn't end there, me praising God. I, I thought that it was awesome because I had never thought about it that way, reading the word just as a praise. I was always reading the word as a conversation, as, as I'm searching for an answer, as let's sit down and get together and talk. So reading the word and offering to God as a sacrifice was completely new to me as I was developing this. Amid the life battles and struggles, this act becomes a source of strength and guidance. It can fill us with courage that we did not have, know we have and cover us with a peace that does surpasses all understanding. It may be hard to understand that when we read God's word, we're praising him because we receive so much when we do that. Secondly, verse 35 presents a challenging but fundamental aspect. It reads, there was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and the children and the foreigners who lived among them. This church emphasizes obedience as an integral part of our worship. Obedience is not just a one-time event, but a life journey, requiring continual alignment with God's will. It is difficult in so many levels. Obedience. For me, as I read the whole, the t Old Testament, it, it, it's, it just seems like a tumbleweed in, in, in the desert going like this. And, and it's always because of disobedience. We're just not following the word of God. We're just not obeying <coughs> the word of God. The Ten Commandments were given to us for a reason. It's just not an adornment on different places and locations. They were meant to be an everlasting message of what the, lo the Lord considered to be right. And the guidance into what we should obey. Obeying, again, is such a hard thing to do. And obeying is funny in many levels. We might think that obeying is, um, you know, when, when the church asks you, hey, will, will you serve in this ministry? And um, you will say, well, let me pray about it. Let me see what the Lord says. Then you would say, well, should I obey the calling to serve in that ministry? Okay, that's a way of obeying, you know. Um, obeying... You might look at it when um, you're telling your children what to do. You expect obedience from your children. You expect them to follow, you know, what you're telling them. But it's funny 
when we have to obey the law, not the big laws, you know, we're not going to go and rob a bank or anything like that, but the little laws, you know, the ones that says 55 is the speed limit, but we push it to 65 because we know that we have a 10 mile thing right there. Is that disobedience? The Lord said that we are to obey those that are in power as long as it does not come in conflict with his word. So how many of the things that we move around in today that have to do with obedience, with following an, an order or, or a precept or a way do we ignore it? Because we don't think that we have to obey that. That's not disobedience to us. Now, if we're child disobeyed us when we gave them an order oh that would be something else but we get to do all these little things that you know that 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 we're not supposed to do we're not supposed to ignore people if we see somebody that needs help we're not supposed to ignore them if we see somebody that needs compassion we're not supposed to ignore them if we see somebody that is broken, if we see somebody that is hurting psychologically, if we see somebody that is in spiritual pain, we're not supposed to ignore them because the Lord says you're supposed to love your brother, your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> Obey the word of the Lord. But we move away from that because, well, we don't have, we don't have to obey that, you know. We, we can go in and out of that, but that is obeying. Obeying is not letting the word just fall by the side. Obey is not letting what the Lord speaks in your heart. Just kind of let it go into a blank. Obeying, it is sitting and, and reading the word of God. But it's also getting up and bringing the word of God with you. And using the word of God during the day. And navigating within the word of God. That is also obedience. Obedience is also an act of submission. Acknowledging his sovereignty over our lives. And experiencing trust in his plans, even when they are difficult to follow and to understand. Submission. Submission, part of obedience. The people of Israel gathered at Mount Ebal did not just bring physical offerings. They brought their surrender hearts. Every time I say the word surrender, it kind of resonates with me because it, it, in my mind, this is a purposeful thing that I have to do. Like I have to stop and pick up a, a big stone and move it here. This is kind of like surrender for me. Okay, I pick it up and I put it here because it's something that it cost me to do. Surrendering is not easy. But that's exactly what the Lord wants. The Lord wants a heart that surrenders to him. Obedience is the unmistakable expression of our reverence for God. It reflects our willingness to follow his lead, even when it challenges our own understanding or seem too difficult for us to do. Just as the Israelites were instructed to continually read and obey the law, we are called to walk in obedience day by day, experiencing growth and refinement through victories and struggles. Obedience, when rooted in the desire to honor God more than anything else, opens the floodgates of blessings in our lives. 
because it brings us closer to God. It makes us a better person. And when I say it opens the floodgates of blessings, I don't mean in answer prayers of tangible things. I mean really in feeling the, the presence of God in your life, the presence of God in the service, the presence of God in the music, In offering a sacrifice of praise, we surrender our agendas and preferences to God's perfect plan, acknowledging that his ways are higher than ours, that his ways are perfect. We offer our sacrifice of praise when we let our hearts overflow with gratitude for the countless blessings bestowed upon us through salvation. Let us remember that true worship involves more than outward rituals. It requires a heart surrender to God in joyful obedience. Like the Israelites at Mount Ival, may we be continually renewed in commitment to obey God's commands, trusting his goodness and walking in the path that he has set before us. Our sacrifice of praise encapsulates a profound truth. Our worship of God is not confined to a single act or moment, but it permeates every facet of our lives. Just as the Israelites gather at Mount Ival with their hearts surrendered to God, we are called to live lives marked by obedience and reference, reverence in every circumstance. In a world filled with distractions and temptation, offering a sacrifice of praise requires an intentional choice and a steadfast commitment. Likewise, sacrifice of praise extends beyond individual worship to incorporate the collective body of believers. That's our church. Just as the Israelites gather as, as one to offer their sacrifice, we are called to unity and solidarity to worship our God. Together we lift our voices, together we lift our hearts, together we lift our place. In conclusion, may we be inspired by the example of the Israelites and Mount Ebal to offer our sacrifice of praise with sincerity and devotion. May we also bow our hearts in humble obedience to our Lord and may our lives be a living testament to the greatness of our God and our worship draw others into the abundant life found in him alone. It is difficult to obey and it's part of our walk with Jesus and towards perfection. Something we have to... Um, practice every day and it's okay to practice it every day the Lord Jesus knows that we're trying and the Lord Jesus know, knows that you're trying and that's where we start God bless you all <laughs>